So I think this would be very useful for our students here. Just uh, we're going to give them a task afterwards based on your presentation. So maybe you have the chance also to answer some questions at the end. So let's try to be around like uh, 30, 35 minutes for the presentation. You can do it like that, and then we can have a discussion. And also maybe Ms. Jana can participate. So please, uh, Maya, let's see if we can make it. So. Okay, um, can you see the presentation? Can you see it? Yes, yes. very well, everything. Okay, okay. great. Um, okay, my presentation is in Spanish. I will, I will be talking in English, but I, I did it in Spanish. I hope you can understand through the images and, and everything. Um, it's about strategies of participation, community participation, and uh, it has two parts. The first part is about my research uh, for my thesis about participatory process, and the second part is about uh, representation, methods of representation uh, to communicate the, um, in a participatory process. I start uh, talking about the building um, uh, environment, uh, how when, when we, we study in architecture, uh, it, we always said that it's, um, it's part of our context, no? it's, it's reflect of our context. But it also re um, reflects, also reflects the identity of the inhabitants of the place that we are working. That's why it's necessary the participation, no? And I always use the word collaboration in terms that uh, it's more than than the persons or the people or the inhabitants participate in a process. It's a process where um, technicians like uh, we as, an art, as architects and, um, and uh, the inhabitants collaborate in a common uh, work like uh, building a, a house or planning a house or planning housing. The, um, it's about, uh, my lecture is about uh, collective housing and spaces of, of uh, common use. Um, I will define, this is the, the habitual uh, intervention that we are in use, where the architects uh, have an idea for, um, for housing in, the, in this case. Uh, the inhabitants exist, but he, as an, as an architect, takes all the decisions, and the, and the result is more like homogeneous result. But in a participatory process, there's the inhabitants that each one have an idea of how a house could be, or how, how the uh, common spaces could be, and they communicate that idea to the technician, not to the architect. And when he uh, have all these ideas, and he collects all these ideas, and he can have a, a result that is more heterogeneous, no? that responds to the needs of, of the inhabitants. Um, I use this quote of Henry Sanoff, where, where he uh, speaks about the exchange of information and the resolution of conflict, where the participation is also uh, trying to get uh, to to a common idea, to a consensus of ideas. Some strategies or techniques to facilitate participation uh, to, for my study, um, I studied three forms of participation. The participation in the design of spaces, the participation in construction, and the, how the inhabitants participate is after construction, how they inhabit a place. I will be talking about the design of the participation in the design of space. Um, I use three um, forms of, of participation. One is through the observation, and, and I use the sample of the pattern language. One is through the dialogue that this could be in many forms, like uh, through uh, meetings, through um, interviews, expo uh, exhibitions. Um, uh, workshops, and the third kind of participation is about an exchange, it's about uh, the observation but also the dialogue, and it's about uh, working in the community with the community. About the process of observation that I, I just said that um, um, this is based on the pattern language of Christopher Alexander that Christopher Alexander exposes that each place has like its 
own patterns, of its own poetry. It's about how spaces are related to, to the word, to, to the form that um, are used, no? The, the activities that happen in a space are related with the qualities of these spaces. And through this method, um, the, in this case, the architects uh, are uh, able to um, watch, to see the, the patterns and how people um, act or what activities they do in, in every place, no? And these activities sometimes are just uh, different where, uh, um, of what is planned, no? Like, for example, in a house, how maybe and the kitchen is also a place to socialize, or how the, um, the, the living room is a place to work, for example. And, and it's because these uh, spaces have certain qualities that goes beyond the space that are planned for. The process of foreign language um, have like um, this uh, three ways to see it. When you um, see a pattern, you um, also see the morphology of spaces. And you define a problem that this morphology um, or the, 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 of this morphology, you know, the problems that have this place. And you try to define um, the, or, or contextualize uh, the, the morphology and the problems uh, that, that happens in, in that place. For example, uh, Christopher Alexander works in, um, in Peru. This is, in, uh, this is a project called Previ, where many architects were called to, to um, design uh, these this, uh, different kinds of collective housing. And he observed um, the way that uh, Peruvians use the spaces. And for them, uh, it was really important, the privacy, no? on how you um, go to a, a house, no? to a space, um, related with the privacy of that spaces. The context that he studied was the context of Latin American um, housing or Latin American way of living in this uh, specific, um, in, this, in this specific case, he studied the way that Peruvian lives and the problem in, in, in the housing, you know, the thing that he needs to take in, a, in account was the transition to the spaces in the house. And the solution was uh, um, plan the spaces uh, from the more public to the more uh, private, no? And the way that people go through the spaces and the people that um, visit the house have a different um, view of the spaces, so different use of the spaces that the people that live in the house. And, and in this case, um, Christopher Alexander worked um, like these transitions through the spaces. And how they are, they go one uh, first and the other uh, second. He also used uh, this um, strategy in Mexico and he observed the way of life of Mexicans. And in this case, he uh, made a plan of um, these common spaces um, where the houses are around the common spaces. But um, one place that he didn't take in consideration in this case was um, um, also like the, the way that the people uh, change the, the way of living uh, through time, no? And in this case, well, at the beginning, for them was very important the common spaces, but later it was more important the individuality of the spaces. And, um, and that's why um, the, the proposal it was good for a moment, but uh, later in time, um, the, the vision of the people changed. The process of dialogue uh, could be through meetings, interviews, exhibitions. And um, one person that started with this kind of process was um, Giancarlo Di Carlo, that he was part of the Team 10. And he proposed, like, a story, the needs of the people through the dialogue. No? The direct, direct dialogue. And one uh, quote of Christopher Alexander, uh, he said, as long as a group of humans in physical space exists, the physical organization of space will continue not only as a fundamental necessity of existence, but as also as the most direct and concrete means of communicating via materialized systems of self-representation. It's, it's very important what the space repre 
um, represent how it represents um, the, the people that inhabit the, the spaces. Um, how I said before, um, this process is based on, is based on meetings uh, to know the, the need of the collective. Uh, later, he worked uh, with interviews to, to know the needs of the individuals. I later with the exhibitions where he received uh, the feedback of the inhabitants about the, the proposal. Um, it's very important that the uh, questions that you made in a participatory process could be direct but also open, no? that, uh, that you give the opportunity to people to express uh, their needs, express um, uh, what, they, what they want or what they dream. Um, to generate the dialogue, it's important the negotiation and to get to a common point. And the participatory process, in the case of uh, Giancarlo Di Carlo, he first discovered the needs of the future inhabitants. Later, he defines the, the problem, uh, formulates an hypothesis, and elaborates the solutions, no? in this case, the proposal. And, and he also anal analyze, analyze the uses um, and evaluate the results. And it's very important when, when the work is done to, uh, to, to evaluate what happened uh, after that, no? how the people use the spaces, and how, you make, how can you make it better for the next um, project. He used um, this process in the Vill Villaggio Matteotti in Italy. Um, he first in, uh, uh, informed the inhabitants about their rights, uh, in this case about their right to participate, and this is because some people is not in use of, of uh, participatory process, and they really don't know that, he, that they can actually uh, ask, that they can actually express their opinions, no? And, and in a participatory process, it's important to, to tell people, to inform people, that they can really uh, have an opinion, and this uh, opinion is gonna is, is gonna be crucial in the process. Um, in the case of uh, Villaggio Matteotti, after the inhabitants uh, saw the proposals, they they said their opinions and they choose the ones that uh, were closer to the idea of the of their ideal space that they want to inhabit. Um, the results was um, five kinds of building were built um, and were made, uh, each one with three different apartments. And at, the, at the end, there were 15 different apartments for different needs. And But the buildings are all, um, they have a common facade. They, even there are 15 different kinds of apartments, they all um, look, uh, they have the common look that defines uh, the needs of the collective, you no, know, the needs of the of the whole community. Another um, theory is about the workshop and charrette and, and Livingstone, that is an uh, Argentinian architect. He he works with this workshop where he discovered through games um, and through the way that he talked with people how what are their their needs, no. And he compared this with uh, when you write, no, that uh, even there's uh, common words, you can write uh, different kinds of um, uh, books based on, on some common words, you know, like the, how you combine these words is what it makes it different. Um, he see the, the workshop as, as tools where he can educate uh, people, but at the same time where he can and, um, learn with people. Um, each participant in the workshop uh, needs to understand uh, what is the, what, uh, what he needs to do now and, and what is the, their expertise in, in the process. They use, uh, he uses in this case uh, different um, ways of representation that this is what we're going to discuss later that help him to communicate better the, the ideas, no? And, and help people to communicate also better their ideas. Um, the, the, the participatory process in this case is also, is also about how the people can uh, also, also control 
the technique, no, and how can they they can take care of the spaces after they are built, and um, when they participate in this process, they also learn about that. When he uh, realized this kind of uh, participatory process, he first um, realized a story of this, how this is going to be um, uh, built, no? and, and how is that relates with the place, uh, about the materials, about the, the culture of that place. Uh, he also studied the economic resources and, the, and how I said, and the materials available in the place. Establish uh, like um, um, he he said people um, what is their role and what is his role as a technician. Um, he organized uh, this kind of um, of workshop that are also like games where they can play and they can uh, have um, have more interest in the process. You know, it's not like a linear process; it's a process that is like an exchange to a game. And at the, at the end of the process, he also uh, make like a, a instruction manual where people uh, can continue you know, um, taking care of the places and also uh, he, they know how to build it, they know how to, how to um, continue building also in the future. The process in of change is more about uh, designing but also building in the place where with the inhabitants. Ralph Erskine is an example that he, also, he actually moved um, his offices to the community in the community that he he worked and that was really good because people uh, could see um, the the process and he also can uh, continue uh, seeing the ways that they live. Is uh, this concept that is uh, important and is, it is to talk. It is also invaluable to observe people, their expression and behavior, behavior and their activities. For these uh, times, can be more illuminating than their expressed opinion. You no, know, it's, it's about both. It's about observe, uh, like uh, Christopher Alexander's post, but it's also about the dialogue. Both are are connected. No. Um, and his process proposed both. You know, uh, if you actually are uh, in the community and work with people, you can see and you can dialogue at the same time. And he, com he combines both the uh, observation and the dialogue. Um, in his participatory process, he first uh, take uh, in consideration the the climate and the and the and the and actually the place where he is going to build. But uh, and this, uh, he also, like I said, he moved his offices to the place to um, design and build with people. This is an example. I think that this is um, like a presentation. I don't know why something happened. But uh, this is an example where he worked. He, this is the um, Biker Housing in England. Some of the decisions that were taken here uh, was that um, was built with um, different kinds of um, uh, masonry, and, and he, he needed to build this um, big wall for the climatic conditions of the place that it was really cold, and there was a uh, cold. Uh, um, um, cold air, and, and he built this uh, big uh, wall that it was uh, um, also the the housing, no? Uh, but this wall has a special identity because he used different colors of masonry that was also uh, from materials that he could uh, he found in the place. About the method of communication with the inhabitants. Um, you need, uh, when you work in a participatory process, you need to take, um, you need to see that people um, uh, always remember the places where he used, they used to live, but they also have like dreams of, of how they want to live. You know, they have um, desires, they, they have also their memories. 
um, both uh, are important when when you um, are designing and place this image of the space with, that people have that is based on their past and their dream of the future. You also um, need to take in account that the the uh, collective image of housing can uh, change from one place to another and could also change through time. Some traditional methods of representation are drawings like perspectives and diagrams, maps, conceptual um, maps, um, models, or, but also photographies or photomontage. Is, um, Photo, photography is, is a very effective way uh, to communicate to communicate the ideas and photo montage because it's more related to the way that people actually see a space and could um, uh, how people could see the space in the future. Uh, this is a process that is uh, is used by IRIO that is, um, is people that use participatory processes for design. Um, they um, work with photographies, but they also work with um, with these cameras, and they send people to to photography um, different kinds of activities and different kinds of spaces, and how they relate both the activity of spaces to get an idea of the place where they are going to work. It's also uh, very important to see how uh, publicity also work with uh, the image of the of, of the house, no? the image of how um, the house could be like very similar to the way of living of people. And this example of this uh, publicity of IKEA that shows like spaces like you, and they combine uh, different elements um, that they actually are part of what they say. But um, these elements forms like different faces, like how the spaces could be just like you. This is another uh, method of uh, participatory methods and way of communicating an idea that is used by Candy Chang in New Orleans. She actually made this uh, tax and she put these tax in, in buildings, no, and, and more like in abandoned buildings where he asks, uh, I wish this was. And people um, write uh, what they, how they imagine that this place could be, uh, what this place could be, you know, like a market, a laundromat. I see some, I saw some of these uh, tags in, in her webpage where people, uh, there's some people that say, I want this to be a Brad Pitt house or something like that. But uh, the idea is how people uh, see these tags and how they can relate with this tag, uh, the, with the famous tag of hello, my name is, and, and this moves them to really uh, like write something and write what they imagine that this place could be. Something that is also very important in a participatory process um, is how you um, communicate uh, where the ideas come from. Like in this example, for the fun, uh, from the Foundation of Social Design Field by, by Solo Kotokita, where uh, this, uh, the, when they show the, the idea of, of the proposal, no, of the place, uh, they relate these ideas with how, um, what the people said in the participatory process. And it, this is very important because they know where the ideas come from. Uh, actually, Seeing the photographs uh, uh, help them to um, to understand that that place is for them, and uh, they can actually um, own that, that place. Another participatory process by Jane uh, Rojas is um, through the models, but using like common tools, common uh, materials to make these models and how uh, you can imagine a place, you can imagine a house, you can imagine a city, uh, just using like common objects that you can relate very easily. Um, like uh, like and you see in the image, uh, there's uh, like Lego pieces, there are like pieces that are for like, uh, 
um, like, I don't know, like fashion, like um, uh, pieces that could be just like trash and how they um, you work with people and how they combine these elements and these elements could be spaces and these elements could be like a house or a big city. This is um, another example of uh, participatory processes in Puerto Rico. And this is from the 70s. And these architect, um, Edwin Giles, always uh, work with communities with participatory process. And uh, depending on the community that he was working, and um, he used like this. methods of representation. Uh, could, uh, he uses maps, he uses models. Uh, you can see um, so in use of living in that, they were so in use of living in that places that they didn't, they didn't know um, actually um, that some places were there and, and they discovered them through the models. And they also have the opportunity not just to build the model but also to, to use tax to um, express their opinion in the model and uh, write things that are not uh, are not visible like uh, this place doesn't smell way uh, well or this place um, is, is not pretty like like you know like words that are um, uh, better for them to describe some things in word that to uh, that to the image Um, this is uh, the participatory process that uh, we work um, in the university in uh, La Salle as part of Oikodomos. And in this, um, in this process, students uh, use um, photographs of the facade of uh, this community called uh, Plus Ultra. And this community was very small. Uh, it was like two streets and and it was it, it was very um, intimate. No, this kind of uh, nail community that is uh, in the middle of of uh, big development of big buildings, and and they the the people was actually uh, disappearing. No, the, the the community was getting smaller and smaller, and we needed we wanted to help them um, to communicate to communicate their needs to communicate what they wanted in that place to, to talk about the hist their history in the place, their memories of the place. Um, that's why students use uh, uh, photographies and also maps. The maps was to, uh, for them to communicate how they actually use the space, how they move through the space, where uh, which spaces they use more, how far are these uh, spaces, if some are inside the community, if some are uh, far from the community, if they need to get their um, walking or they need to use the public transportation. Um, they actually have the opportunity to write uh, why it's important for them to, to have some spaces inside the community and how difficult it is sometimes to, to need to travel long distances to get to some important uh, places. In the, with the photography of the facade, they actually uh, wrote uh, some memory of the place, and that helped them to to see also the the importance of their community, of the importance of the story of the community, and and how they, this could, they could express um, um, this importance uh, when when they needed to communicate to communicate to the administration about what they wanted. This is a participatory process that I realized uh, that, that I made here in Puerto Rico 
Um, this is a community called Buena Vista in, in Santurce, in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And this community have a big problems because they have this river and this, um, this is an informal community. They built their houses very close to this, this river and the river is, is polluted right now and it's all, uh, in also grow um, and the community uh, have problems of flood, no? Um, uh, and, and they are losing in some way their love of the community because of, of the problems that they have and they really don't know how to express what they want, uh, what, what they need in, the, in, in their community. And that's why we made this participatory process um, to, to help them to communicate that, to, to fall in love again with the community, to see their houses, to express where are the houses. Uh, we, at the end, we actually have the opportunity to help them to build some things, to, to paint their houses. And they say like um, what colors they, they want in the houses. Uh, also what kind of spaces they needed the public spaces they needed to support uh, the the community. Um, in this case, we work uh, with one of the biggest streets in the community, and and they said the opinions of the street of the of how they needed to to have um, um, places for the for the trash, for example. There's they have this uh, big um, empty space that that many people from outside the community use it as um, as a place to for for the trash no and they, they didn't want that um, and they, they didn't they wanted to change that um, space as a, a garden and they they actually said that in the participatory press um, process this is uh, another example and this, this is also in the in Buena Vista community. Um, and this is how uh, we show them the proposals to get to have their feedback. Um, when, when, when we presented the proposal, we also pre presented the, the photographs of the people uh, that participate um, and their opinions about the community, uh, what they wanted in the community. And that, that helped them to, to see that the proposals came from their opinion. The proposal came from, from, from what they said, and they could relate better with that proposal. This is uh, another participatory process made by the Enlace Project. Um, and that is, this participatory process is not uh, in, in Buena Vista, Santurce. There's um, many communities that are um, along the, the river that have that problem. And some people need to move um, to other spaces because um, the flood problem. Um, and they have this need of building houses, but they, they wanted the people to say how they wanted these, these houses. Um, in this case, they have this place that they could also, um, actually build a collective housing and I wanted the people to say what they wanted in that space and, and actually realize how many um, houses could or how many uh, buildings could uh, uh, could be in that place and also the how the public spaces could relate to that to that building. Another participatory process uh, that um, I made here in uh, Puerto Rico and was in the community of La Perla that, that is also in San Juan. Um, we gave these uh, cameras to the kids that, that were the, the ones that really used the space like in, um, and the, in La Perla no? and they used the space uh, most of the time because uh, they, you know, they, they, they go to school, but they get, uh, they return to the community early, um, earlier than their parents, and they use the spaces uh, more. And we, we wanted to know how they use the, that spaces and how they relate to the spaces. Like we made these questions of 
where where is this um, um, like pho photography the place where you play photography the place where you meet with your friends and the, your favorite place the, the the place that that you don't like um, and the place that where that you uh, like to see the, the sea, no? Because the community is very close to the sea and he, that uh, have this relationship with the sea that is very important. And, and that's why many um, people uh, speculate with this place because it, is, uh, it have um, a position that is very um, beautiful and important. And, and they, really, they really know that. And, and we discovered that through the, through the photography. And we also made a proposal based on that photograph that the kids took. And this is another, um, this is something that I'm working with my students right now. This is the participatory process that I made for, that they made for the, for another community. Uh, very, um, here in San Juan also. Um, and this is an informal community that is very close to the, to the formal city of San Juan. Uh, when the, the students also work with photographs of the of the houses, and they make they use these post-its where where people could um, express their opinion about the the places in between of these houses, the public spaces, and how they could be better. They also work with maps, and they make this uh, big blackboard where the people could express. And that was really that was one of the favorite parts of people and the kids from the community and they really express their opinions in this big blackboard and actually better than than with the maps no they could relate better with the blackboard um, another method that my student used was this um, puzzle um, and the, the idea of the puzzle is that um, it was like a game where the where the kids needed to, to find the pieces to make the puzzle and the pieces were hidden uh, in different parts of the community. Um, they had the opportunity you know, through um, some signs to find the pieces and made this, uh, this image uh, that was in the puzzle. And the, the image was a, a space that is abandoned and how they could actually be in this place and use the space. But through the game, we also discover uh, how the kids uh, use the space and what is important for them talking, talking with the kids uh, through the game. Um, this presentation, uh, the thing, I don't know why um, I'm having technical problems. It's not my, uh, the last one that I made. The last one that I made also talk about the, the barcode, barcode housing process. Um, the use of photography in the barcode housing process. If you give me a minute, I try to find that presentation because uh, this, this is not the last one. And you can also like uh, start um, and thinking about the questions. I'm sorry about my English. There's a long time that I don't speak in English. <laughs> that I give my classes um, mostly in Spanish. Let's see if this is my last presentation. I don't know why it's not working.
Okay, I hope I hope that this is my last presentation. Thanks, Mirjana. <laughs> I, want, I really wanted to share the, the, the work that I'm doing here because I'm actually exploring different kinds of, of ways to communicate with people. And, and working with students is, is very important because uh, uh, they discover um, different ways of, of communicate and, and that's very interesting and how they use their imagination and hope that the, that the students from Ocobel Colomo, from Barcelona, and, different places that uh, could have the same uh, imagination and and see that there's many ways to communicate with people and it's very related with their culture also. Um, and what one that is very uh, good is, is working with games because people already uh, really uh, get inspired with these kind of things and, and show more interest. And it's not that meetings are not uh, effective, but it's another way of, of uh, work with meetings um, and know how the people live and how they want to live. So this is actually not working. I don't know why. Um, can, you, can you hear me, Leandro? Angel? Let's see if this is my last presentation. I don't know why it's not working. Okay, I hope, I hope that this is my last presentation. Thanks, Mirjana. <laughs> I, want, I really wanted to share the, the, the work that I'm doing here because I'm actually exploring different kinds of, of ways to communicate with people. And, and working with students is, is very important because uh, uh, they discover um, different ways of, of communicate and, and that's very interesting and how they use their imagination and hope that the, that the students from Ocobel Colomo, from Barcelona, and, different places that uh, could have the same uh, imagination and and see that there's many ways to communicate with people and it's very related with their culture also. Um, and what one that is very uh, good is, is working with games because people already, uh, really uh, get inspired with these kind of things and, and show more interest. And it's not that meetings are not uh, effective, but it's another way of, of uh, work with meetings um, and know how the people live and how they want to live.
So this is actually my project in my new way. Um, Danny, can you hear me, Leandro, Angel? Sí, Mayra, te vemos bien. Okay. ¿Nos escuchas? Okay. Uh, ¿Sí? Yes. sí, es que tengo un problema con la presentación. Esta no era la última. Parece que esa era la que cargué anteriormente uh, con, cuando estaba hablando con Ángel. Y, y no sé, no sé por qué no se sube la, la presentación, eh, la última presentación que quería mostrarles lo que estuvimos trabajando con con el barco housing y, y la foto de licitación, pero bueno. Bueno, lo podemos, eh, eh, pueden... lo podemos mostrar luego. ¿no? Vale. Quizás eh, solo falta esto, ¿no? Y lo digo para ver si hay algún diálogo ahora con los alumnos. Maybe we switch to sí. English because I think Mirjana is okay, uh, also yes. there, I think. Okay. So, um, okay. we have here um, a group of nine students and mm -hmm. they are them for exchange students, so uh, I don't have, we have, we don't have here Spanish people this time, so it's a very international project, of course. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I'd like to give, the, to give them the chance to, to talk to you and ask some questions because the task we are going to give them uh, is going to be to go on the topics you have talked in the presentation, the theories and also the examples and try to um, go deeper into them. So they are going to study in the next week some of these theories and from Alexander or some of these examples or other examples they can provide. So um, let's see if they can have any question for you and you can talk to them. So here's your observing how uh, a space works, how people interact with space, trying to get the patterns of, of that, and then use that to provide solutions to, to provide alternatives to the living space. So do you have any question, any idea about that? How this I guess, makes sense to, to apply this theory? This makes sense to you guys. I don't know. Maybe I can talk a little bit more about my personal experience. I mean, I, I, I suppose that you guys made a site analysis, no, for every project that you're designing. Yeah, they are not designing. Um, no, there's a question. Well, you can when ask. you design in school, <laughs> when you design in school, you always uh, have this uh, first step of making a site analysis, no. And, uh, and uh, analyze the pattern language of how the people use the spaces is is an important part of the of, uh, site analysis, um, not just observing um, uh, how the city works, how how the people use the spaces is very important. This uh, the pattern language is about that. Okay, we have a question here. There's no Mr. questions about. Yeah, yeah, there's a question now. <laughs> Um, I'm a South African student studying at the SAI for about six mm -hmm. months. Um, we've worked in South Africa in projects similar um, using participatory design methods. And one of the um, problems that we've encountered, um, being an English and Afrikaans speaking student, a lot of the times we were 
um, put out of our comfort zones and had to go into um, different areas where people speak African languages which we are not familiar with. I would like to know mm -hmm. how do you um, grapple with that problem? How do you go about addressing people in a foreign language and still extracting and gathering the information that you need in order to make decisions um, using the methods that you are using? Well, with, with, when you have a problem with the language, uh, definitely uh, the way that, that you um, represent the idea um, is, uh, is the clue and when you have a, a problem with the language. Like, for example, using images um, is a way to communicate. Um, and how these images actually relate with uh, how the people live or the memories, like I said before, of the vision of the future, no? how, how with images you can show them um, the present, no? how, how is the community now, and they could also talk a little bit about how you, it, it was the community before, how they wanted the community to be, also with images, like, uh, for example, with the, through the pho photograph, is a participatory process that could be um, very effective um, in the case, uh, in your case, you know, like um, maybe they uh, see the images, but they, uh, they um, say something, but it's, it's, it's difficult for you to understand, but if they can say something uh, through images also, right, or taking photographs or uh, bringing photographs from their past, and then you can have a better idea of how they used to live or, or bringing maybe um, uh, images from publicity that they see and they, they um, relate with that. And that, that's, that's another, uh, this, this another good way to, to communicate the idea without words, just through the image. Can I answer your question? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think the, I think it's important that the, the, the concept of language is not only verbal but also is um, a visual language, and both are very much combined. So I think uh, I think a pro, uh, an answer to the question is just to expand the idea of language, not, not only to the oral language but also to the visual, and combine them in order to to interact with people. Right? We have another yeah, question yeah. now. And you from, uh, okay. Yeah, there's a question from Isiana that maybe we can answer afterwards. Let's give the word now to another student here. She's from Germany. Okay, let's see. Could the participatory process be done through social media? Uh, of course. Isiana? Hi. Uh, I want to, you to ask um, if you don't have a very healthy community, so um, what do you do if people don't want to participate or take um, be a part of your participation? What do you do against that? So. Yeah. Well, in, in that case is where the, the traditional meeting doesn't work because if you plan a traditional meeting, maybe nobody shows up, um, nothing happens, no? Uh, maybe it's, uh, like Mirjana said, uh, the social media could be a, a good idea um, using like, um, um, I don't know, um, for example, using the, the internet, the um, the, the social media using, uh, um, you know, like other, there's other ways to ask questions that is not uh, just uh, the direct way, you know, like, like I said before, maybe through games, maybe through publicity, um, it's another way to make people participate and they maybe uh, don't even know that you're asking something in, and they don't even know what the idea, uh, that, that idea is, is going to come from that. Um, but when they see a proposal and they see that uh, the idea comes from, um, I don't know, a game or a photograph that you, cho that you show them, they, they can see the relationship and, and they, they can relate better with that. Sometimes when they see that you're, you're working there at the beginning, um, they don't believe that you're going to do something. That happened a lot here in, in Puerto Rico because through time, um, many people made proposals, 
different and they they actually are skeptic about proposals they they think that nothing is going to happen and when they, why they are going to participate is if if uh, nothing is going to happen no but when they see you uh, that when they see that you go every week to the community and you're making different activities they they can feel like oh these people is really interested in, these people is really going to do something and and that's another way to to to, to involve people uh, um, in a in a participatory process. Um, what they say in Jana, I mean the ICT. Okay, you you mean what what do you mean with ICT? Yes, Amir Jana is also uh, making a question here. Oh, you mean like when you when you work with um, with another kind of inhabitants? No, not just like a, like marginalized or with poor people. No, the community is, is everything. No, then and it's very important to um, involve everybody that that live in the in the place. No, not just the poor poor people and marginalized people. Uh, for example, in this last community that I'm working. There's these uh, little houses um, and they might, uh, inhabitants and marginalized inhabitants, but uh, close or, or in the community, there's also um, a building with, for wealthy people. And in every um, in every activity that we make, we also invite them you know, because they are part of the community. And that that is important because it's not just the poor people that needs uh, the process. You know, they also have the right to communicate their ideas. Uh, maybe uh, inviting them to these activities uh, help them to, you know, to to meet with the other people and to make something um, that is for everybody. That that answer your question, Juliana. Information and communication. Okay, great. There's another question about it. Um, participatory process or way of communicating. Like like I said before, through the through the image is important, and um, not just with photography. Making maybe with when when you um, say to the people to draw something, no, uh, to draw a um, a conceptual map of their community, or to draw the house of their dreams, or the house that they used to live. Uh, this is another way of communication without words. There's another question. Uh, well, it seems from what you are saying that uh, when you are communicating and with people to engage people into the process, you have to actually design also the scenarios and the spaces for participation. Yes rather than just going there and uh, so it's, it's a very important part of the of the process to design the right scenario right so yes that's, that's important because sorry yeah exactly um, when um, to my student uh, I made them to think about um, where we're gonna do this process and this place have to be important for them. This place have to be visible, and how they are going to, um, um, I don't know, uh, where they're going to put their drawings, where they're going to put the maps, how this uh, uh, is going to be in the space is very important. You know, it, it's exactly what you said. You, you need to design the scenario where they feel comfortable. You know, this blackboard that they made, it was a really important place where they really need to see it. And and it's important to to work with that with the the way that the um, the media that you're using is um, is in the space. Um, see, because I have this uh, I don't know technical problem that I just can show something with. Actually, with um, with uh, oikodomos, 
Ah, no, now later. Okay. <laughs> With oikodomos, uh, we ask people to do that. We ask people to to draw their their houses, and it was very very um, was very interesting uh, because they don't know how to to make a plan, uh, and they actually were uh, drawing in plan and elevation at the same time, um, and they um, draw like. The way that they move, not the way that the house is like you move here and you find this uh, room and then you continue walking and you find this other room. And, and is, this is, a, uh, you know, an example of a conceptual map of a house or, or when, when you ask a person how to get from one place to another and the way that they show uh, different important places in, in the way that if you say to, to other person to draw the same for, for the other person, there's other important places. Um, and that's an example of, you know, like different way to see the space. Uh, a conceptual map is related with that. Um, the, the importance of the places, the way they move. Uh, maybe later I can send you some images so I can send them my, actually my last presentation that I will have, I have more examples. We were discussing before the class, uh, there was a, a presentation by a student here. We were talking about the sense of belonging. And mm -hmm. do you think that all these experiences uh, reinforce the links between people and place? Is that your experience after all of these um, participatory actions you have made? Do you think that people oh, yeah, feel because... more Yeah, they, they actually... Um... What, the, what I said before, and in, in this Buena Vista community, um, they were losing their love with the, in the community, no? And actually, um, in that street, they were neighbors that they didn't, they didn't know each other. Um, when they saw that there was something going on, um, they started to, to, re, um, to recu the, recuperate in that way to uh, have, all, uh, again, their love for the community and their sense of belonging to the community. It's like recovering the community when you know that you can do something and you really uh, recover this uh, sense of place and sense of belonging. In the, in the last community, Alto de Cabra, uh, the last time that we returned, uh, we saw people actually cleaning um, the streets and, and um, one um, one of the inhabitants of a place told them told us uh, they are cleaning because they are excited that there's something going on and this is an example of of a sense of belonging you know they they recovered they, their place and they wanted to do something about it before there was trash everywhere it was like they like they didn't care you know like they just care about their houses. Um, Sometimes they didn't even care about their houses. Many people were leaving, you know, the, um, young people were leaving the place because they were losing, you know, the, the sense of place. Um, and I think that, yeah, that participatory can, can help with that, um, with, the, with the sense of belonging. One more question. Um, my question is, when you go out to these communities and you make use of the conceptual maps, the imagery, um, and you ask people to participate, um, this is a very intuitive process that you use to, uh, to gain information from these people. Then you, mm -hmm. as a, then you as an architect or urban designer um, have been trained and have the expertise of five years of study or how long ever. How do you find the balance between an intellectual and an intuitive process and marrying the two ideas to come up with a solution? Um, where do you draw the line of maybe using more of their um, needs or interpretations or using some of your own? Okay, first, uh, to communicate with them, it's very important not to use the academic language. And um, we say here an expression that is talk like uh, in arroz y habichuela, like rice and beans, that is a common thing that we eat a lot here. Um, when you talk with people, you need to um, um, 
of their language, no? Like the way that they know. Um, and the line between what they want and, and what maybe um, uh, you as an architect think that things have to be is, um, I think that when you make the proposals, um, and this is the time when people, uh, when, when you can like um, show them um, and not other options, you know, like they say things that are very abstract uh, or very general. And when they actually see proposals, they have something to talk about. Um, maybe if you don't work with proposals, if you're not designing, but you show them like different ways to uh, inhabit a place where they, when they, where they can choose, uh, this is a, a, a way that they can see uh, other options, no, on inhabiting uh, a place. Um, and it could be a, a good way to, to communicate uh, and to show like your ideas as, as an architect of how to make a better place and try to, um, I don't know, like um, make this idea to match with their, their ideas and that, that they can see how both ideas are and doesn't need to be like like um, opposites. I don't know if, if I'm asking if I'm asking your question. So I'm answering your question. Yeah, okay, yes. thank you. So I think uh, well we have been here almost two hours. So uh, I think it's coming to an end now. Uh, it has been a very very nice experience. This is the first event of the OICONET project, so I think uh, it has a lot of value for us. First, because uh, we were here before physically, now we are sharing the space uh, virtually. So and mm -hmm. it has a connection with um, Puerto Rico, which is also beyond Europe, so we want to make a global, a global uh, mm -hmm. network at the same time. So I think as okay. being the first uh, event, public event, I think it has a lot of symbolism. So. Thank you for dedicating, uh, dedicating your time to us. Okay, and thank you for the opportunity. Maybe we can hopefully now develop other kind of collaborations, maybe between your students and to the workspaces and maybe commenting the work that they are doing here. Or so we can find other ways of uh, keeping in touch in the next weeks, maybe. We, can, okay. we have to discuss yeah, that maybe later in another moment, but to see if uh, we can uh, also bring something from here into your course or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, maybe maybe um, some my, of my students can share their experience. Um, yeah. I can actually send you some some more examples of my presentation. I believe in creating in creative commons, and I don't have any problems to share my presentations, and, and they, uh, you guys can have a copy or make copies of it. Okay, thank you. So we'll uh, put it uh, probably as a resource in the Oikolomos workspaces. Your presentation, mm -hmm. they can take a look at that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, so okay. thank, you. thank you. What time is it now? There. It's in six hours earlier than here, right? Yeah. Like here, here is 2, uh, 2 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, 2 in the afternoon. Okay. Then have a good afternoon. We are going to close the class today. And thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Mirjana, for being there. Okay. Bye bye. See you next time.